This is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. This phone has been out for about six months now, and it's Apple's latest and greatest. They have even bigger cameras than the year before, finally bumping the megapixel count up to 48 for the main camera. It features an always-on display that can boost all the way up to 2,000 nits. It boasts incredible battery life, satellite connectivity, and, of course, the island. Now, all these features and tech specs are nice and fun to have, but the question I have is, how do they hold up in the field? Now, I'm someone that usually does not upgrade phones very often. I usually wait around five or six years to the point where my phone is destroyed, broken, an absolute piece of garbage. My iPhone 10 that I had had for a long time, it finally hit the point where I thought, okay, let's upgrade. Now, the main reason I needed to upgrade wasn't because it was beaten and battered. It was still a great daily driver. It could do almost anything and everything I wanted to do, on a regular daily basis. But where it was falling behind was when I was out adventuring. And I came to the realization that I absolutely needed a new phone when I was on my last hunt. Because on that hunt, I brought five cameras. I brought my GH4, A7S, drone, GoPro, and my phone. And of all those cameras, there was one I used the most, and that was my iPhone. But I wasn't just using my iPhone as a camera. It was also my Mac. And with the Dookie battery life, I had it plugged in nearly constantly for that entire trip. And I was also terrified the entire time that a little splash in the river or too much sweat in my pocket was going to kill it. So I realized I needed to get the newest phone. Now the main things that matter to me are the cameras, the battery life, and the GPS, and how well those hold up in different conditions when I'm out adventuring. So the very first thing I decided to throw at this device when I got it last fall was the cold weather test. I took it ice skating with me and decided to try out all the new cameras. Immediately, I could tell that the 48 megapixel main camera was incredibly sharp, especially jumping from the 10. The fact that I could zoom in on a lot of these photos and the quality was still there was honestly stunning to me, and I was really impressed. I also noticed that the HDR abilities got increasingly better, especially that big jump from the 10. And immediately, my favorite camera quickly became the ultra wide. And the telephoto is really great too, with little asterisks. In bright daylight, this is something I'll get into later. Now, usually when I'm taking photos of myself and or even people, I try to avoid using the front facing camera unless it's for Snapchat. I don't know if it's just because they finally did the megapixel jump up to the 12 megapixel main camera, but I am very impressed with how good the selfie camera is. Now, the one thing I was a little bit bummed about was the slow-mo film. I was hoping that at this point, after five years, at least a crisper and cleaner 1080p, but it still looks really mushy and it's super obvious. But with the slow-mo plus the ultra wide, honestly, it is so much fun. I kind of almost don't care, but I still wish it was a little bit cleaner. Now, while we were ice skating, it was about five degrees and I had it out a lot taking photos and videos. My iPhone 10 will do this, and I'm sure many of you know this, that if you have your phone out in the cold, you'll watch it go from like 80%, and then all of a sudden it's at 20%, and then it's just dead. Did crash at one point, and I thought, oh wow, it really just crashed without even giving me a battery percentage drop. But then I booted it back up, and I started thinking, well, it is iOS 16, and I have been noticing that iOS 16 is still pretty buggy. That did give me a lot of confidence to know that it didn't crash because it got too cold. Now, on the drive back from ice skating, I just happened to notice that the Aurora was coming out. And this got me really excited. This was one of the biggest reasons I wanted to upgrade, was the fact that I knew that this phone had night mode. Now, so many times I am driving home late at night, and I see the Aurora's out, but I don't have my camera with me 
and my iPhone 10 can't do long exposures, so I completely miss the ability to capture it. And I thought, this is it. I can finally just pull over, pull out my phone, and take a picture and be able to send it to my friends and family and say like, look, this, this is what the nice guy is like right now. And you were not quite there. <laughs> we're not, we're not quite there. The iPhone will allow you, if you're holding it still, a three second exposure. If you're really still, maybe five to 10. And at a three second exposure with the main camera, this is very specific with the main camera, it actually looks pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty damn good. Don't zoom in it too much because then you'll see the really crappy post sharpening. I am pleasantly surprised by how good it looks at three seconds handheld. Now my disappointments with the ultra wide and telephoto start to come into play. At low light, even with long exposures, the ultra wide and telephoto suck ass. Now off the backs of this, I wanted to know, okay, well, my dreams of just being able to hop out and shoot a quick photo of the Aurora and have it be amazing and beautiful and fantastic with my phone isn't quite fully realized, but with the help of a tripod, night mode will allow you to shoot up to 30 second exposures. 30 second exposures with the main camera, it's good. It's good, it's not amazing, but it's really good. The main at 30 second exposures is shockingly good. I am pleasantly surprised by how well these photos turned out. Now that's an asterisk, the main. I was really hoping that the ultra, that the ultra wide with the tripod on would be good, but it isn't. It's still mush. Look at this. This is edited, boosted. It just looks, it's bad. That's all I gotta say. The conclusion I've come to after using this phone for about six months is that the ultra wide and telephoto are not meant to be used in low light. Okay, so I have a little add on to the Aurora shooting part, which is that this was in mediocre conditions. This shoot was from just driving down the road at late at night and the Aurora happened to be out and hopping out and getting some pictures of just some mediocre Aurora. I felt like that wasn't quite totally fair to the camera because most of the time when I'm taking Aurora photos, I am planning a shoot. I'm going out in a clear night, someplace open when I know the Aurora is good. So that is it precisely what I did to really test out and see how well these cameras can capture the Aurora. And here are some of the shots I got. Right off the bat, the main camera remains the champion. I am pleasantly surprised and shocked with how well some of these photos have turned out. Better conditions and better lighting, the ultra wide becomes usable. It's still not perfect, it's still not great, but I am much more pleased with these photos than I was with the previous ones. But you can still see in the edge of the frame where there's less light, where it starts to become far more grainy and far more mushy. But for the most part, it's pretty damn good. I think this is the clear tell test of how bad the ultra white is, because I'm videoing and you know, you can kind of see the Aurora, but watch, I'm about to change the main camera. Boom, holy shit. Now all of a sudden, I mean, it's grainy, but you can see so much more. Wow. Now I'm testing out the zoom. See if that's actually any good. Wow, look at that. <gasps> I am pleasantly blown away. I am truly pleasantly blown away to know that I can get these shots with this phone and now I can and now anyone else can that has this phone and a tripod can take this photo is genuinely really exciting. And that makes me happy. Now a little side note on the cameras. When I first saw that they had the 2X option, which was just a crop in on the main sensor, I thought, ew, no, I'm not gonna touch that. It's just digital zoom. Who the hell is gonna wanna use that? And I basically never used it because I just presumed that it was digital zoom, it was bad. But I was wrong. Looking at the shot here where I go from the main camera into 2X zoom, I was very much expecting it to be noticeably grainy, but it wasn't. They did a really good job at being able to just use part of the sensor. It really is 48 megapixels because 
the quality did not drop by using the two times. I might not have been getting some shots that I wanted to get simply because of my bias against the digital zoom. But with the 48 megapixels, the two times, I think it might be better than the three times optical camera. Now there's plenty of small features that I have not mentioned in this video. One of which is the screen. It is 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is very nice. And I do like that. But one of the aspects of the display that did get an upgrade that I found quite useful when I'm out and about is the screen's ability to push up to 2000 nits in harsh, bright daylight, which I found to be quite helpful when I'm flying my drone, which is something I truly appreciate when I'm out and about. Okay, so everything I've talked about so far has been a one day trip and testing it out in the environments. And so far it's been really good. But my real test where I really wanna see how all this phone holds up is when I'm out someplace where there's no way to be able to charge it and this phone becomes an even more vital piece of equipment. Not only the sense of being able to take pictures and videos, but as well as a GPS and now even potentially a way to SOS. So this brings us to my last video, the little backcountry getaway that Sarah and I did. Now, whenever I'm out adventuring, I'm always using an app to track my mileage as well as my location. And this is also very important for knowing where I've been. That way, if I'm out someplace and weather rolls in, I can know where to come back to. So I started off tracking without a 100% battery life. And Sarah and I skied up and then we skied back down. Now, when we got back down, I decided to take a screenshot because I was so stunned. Two hours of GPS tracking, the battery had only dropped 1%. I honestly thought that this was like a little fluke, like it was gonna drop 20, 30, 40% all of a sudden, but it didn't. It held on just fine. Now with the shot of this moose as we're driving by, I really noticed something that I, I feel like, I don't wanna say it's unique to iPhones, but it's such a clear indicator to me that it is a smartphone that is filming this. And that is that tiny little optical stabilizer jitter. Now, usually this helps quite a bit to make your footage look a lot smoother, but in low light plus the zoom, it's really noticeable. It just gets under my skin a little too much. If you play it slow, it becomes more noticeable. And it's also kind of noticeable when we're ice skating. You can kind of see it as I'm going around and the stabilizer will hit a point it can't move anymore, so it has to kind of snap back. When it snaps back, it creates a kind of motion blur effect across the whole video, which is kind of frustrating. I, I wish there was a way to turn that off, but obviously this is Apple and they don't want you to have too much control. Now the cabin that we were staying at for the evening was a public use cabin, so it didn't have any power and where it was located in the deltas is someplace that I know usually doesn't have any cell service. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that it had one and even sometimes two bars of LTE, which then allowed me to play music. And because we didn't have any power, I was also using it as a flashlight. So for the whole evening that we were cooking and just hanging out, I was using my phone as a flashlight as well as a speaker. And during all this, it never really seemed to be dropping battery life all that fast. Now where I expected to see a real battery life drop was throughout the night. As we weren't adding any wood into the fire, the cabin got very cold and dropped down to around 10, 20 degrees. And this is where my iPhone 10 would always die. Whenever I was out and about camping or on an adventure, I would always stick my phone in one of my inside pockets or in my sleeping bag with me to make sure it didn't get too cold and die throughout the night. But I left it out to see how much the battery would drop. And lo and behold, it didn't drop pretty much at all. And then when we got back into town, I took this screenshot of the battery life percentage. Now the screen active time was only an hour and 12 minutes, which isn't very much, but for everything else that I was doing with it, I am pleasantly surprised to see how well the battery life is. The fact that I was able to get back after not having it charged for nearly 36 hours and then not even have to worry about charging it right away. Now this was the moment where it all came together for me because my iPhone 10 is still a perfectly fine daily driver, but it's when I'm out and adventuring where it really falls apart. And that's where this phone held up. And it proved to me that this was indeed a good investment for my adventures. Before I get to the overall scores of all the little things that I personally care about in a device, I need to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound provides royalty-free music for all creators across all platforms. They have a huge library of over 35,000 tracks from real artists all over the globe. The music that we are currently listening to is a song from Epidemic Sound, as well as the six other tracks that were before it. 
and they all have over 90,000 sound effects as well, which came in quite handy when I was creating my intro. I personally have been using Epidemic Sound for the last several months, and it has made finding music for my videos way easier. Finding music used to be a giant chore, a task to find music, and then hopefully find a track that works just to find out that I can't use it and I'll get a copyright claim or even restrictions on my videos. With Epidemic Sound, you'll never have to worry about getting a copyright claim ever again. So if you're looking for music or sound effects for your next video or project, I highly recommend checking out Epidemic Sound. And you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 30 days free trial. So big thank you to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. All right. Let's get to the scores. Right off the bat, let's talk about the design. I am very much in favor of this bigger, beefier design. Because as you can see from my old phone, I am not very nice on my devices. And having a device that is thicker and stronger and I don't need to be as worried about dropping and cracking and breaking is something I personally find extremely beneficial. So the design gets a 10 out of 10, the display. Now, when I first pulled this out of the box and I started using it, I didn't really notice or care about the high refresh rate, but now after I've used it for six months, looking at a device that isn't 120 hertz looks gross. <laughs> so I have fallen in love with the 120 hertz display and the ability that it can push up to 2000 nits brightness is honestly fantastic. The display also gets a 10 out of 10. Now the battery life. You already know, it's a 10 out of 10, enough said. Now. Let's get to the cameras. This for me personally is probably the thing I care about most in a device. Each camera is getting its own ranking. The main camera is a 9.3 out of 10. It doesn't quite get the 10 out of 10 because of the optical image stabilization. It still does that little tick. I was really hoping they would have worked out this kink on this phone, but they have yet to do that. If they had figured that out and made it smoother, the main camera would be an easy 10 out of 10. Now, the ultra wide. I love the ultra wide. I use the ultra wide probably just as much, if not possibly more than the main camera, because it just is so much fun to be shooting with. That being said, it still sucks in low light. And for that reason, seven out of 10. And the telephoto. The telephoto is a six out of 10, mostly for the same reason the ultra wide is a seven out of 10 because it sucks in low light. And with the optical image stabilization, with it being on a zoom, it's even more apparent, which makes it even worse. That being said, in broad daylight, the 3X zoom is quite great. I like to use it, but I don't find myself using it that much. And I think I'll probably just find myself using the 2X more. All right, under the big question, should you buy this device? If you have an older phone and you've been on the fence of getting a new phone, I will tell you right now, you will not be disappointed with this. But also, if you're on the fence of getting a new phone, you should just wait another six months until Apple releases the iPhone 15, which will be a little bit better. But yeah, I think that should about wrap it up. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.